So I've been working on this gadget I think will come in really handy for somebody who wants to create a time speed distance rally. And uh, it, it consists of a, an app that you, that the rally master would use in their car, and then an application that would use to construct the route book. So uh, the device in the car has a very accurate GPS receiver and antenna system, um, and it it uh, it has a uh, special, unu fairly unusual mode called UDR, which is um, untethered dead reckoning, which allows the GPS to work when there's uh, uh, interference with the with the GPS signal, like trees, hills, canyons, uh, tunnels, parking garages, things like that. So this thing will, once it loses a good G a GPS fix, it'll use this dead reckoning mode to continue giving you reasonably good GPS position. So it has that in this in this device that I've created for the car. It has a, a pickup for the Odo in the car, a very accurate odometer connected to the wheel on the car, um, just like present day rally computers do. And uh, in addition to that, it has uh, this plunger, plunging device. So the plunger, uh, when I get to, uh, to a location along the route that I wanna mark, let's say there's a sign right there, Montgomery Lane. So what it do, does is it marks the time, well, the time's not that important, but the GPS position and the odometer, the, the odometer from the vehicle, it, it records when I push the plunger. In addition, it actually recorded a voice message uh, that I can use to keep track of what that event was. So I don't have to write down what happened right there. I push the button and um, um, it, it recorded a message for me, so I don't have to take a, a, a paper note for it. Right on Yakima. So with this, with this setup, you can drive around, drive the route, drive at uh, legal speeds, uh, and create a car rally from it. Well, this is the app that you use to create the rally route book with. So you start by opening the application. And uh, the next thing you need to do is uh, you, you would create a new project and import the data from a previous route survey that uh, was was collected with the device in the car. So um, the, the, the data from that uh, from that device is downloaded. And um, as it's imported into the into the application here, you can see that the, that the speech that was recorded is getting transcribed into text. Um, not perfect, but um, it, it uh, converts a, a fairly decent job of converting the text, uh, con uh, the speech into text. Um, and it takes about as long as it does to, to say the text. So sometimes it can be quite long if your rally is fairly long. So um, once you've uh, imported it all into this dialog, you can say load and it'll load it into the palette that you're gonna use to create your route book. And uh, when you're in this mode, things that are in orange means that there's a problem that needs to be resolved. So, and if you hover over these, you'll see what the error is. And this one says, um, there must be at least one start of um, uh, section in the, in the route book. So it doesn't really make sense to have a rally unless you start it. So the way to fix that is to go in and change the type of, uh, of this entry. And um, initially these all come in as numbered route instructions or NRI, NRIs. So uh, once we selected a begin section that solved uh, some of the problems here, but we still have some orange entries we need to fill in. And so we need to put in the, um, the time that the rally is going to start and uh, and we've been, done that. That cleared up that orange box. And the next thing is we need to give it a we need to give it a, a average speed or a change average speed to value. And so I'm going to select 30 in here. And once we do that, we've um, basically created a rally at this point that we could run. We'd leave it at 10 a.m., cast the 30, and keep going. And uh, so um, so the the speech translation here um, didn't do a really good job, but what you, what we can do here is we can actually click on this icon and play back that recorded audio. So I'm going to do that now. Section at yield. 
So as you heard, the beginning of that was a little bit garbled, um, but uh, you can kind of tell what it's saying. Um, you know, what was intended to be here was, uh, was uh, begin section at quote yield. And so you can go through and you can modify the, uh, you can modify the entries here, the, the text to speech that it created, you can create the, create the instructions. You, uh, you don't have to use all of the entries that you've, that you've collected. You can unselect the show button and they won't show up in the, uh, in the route book at the end. Um, you could also delete the row. Um, you can go and edit and delete. Um, event row but uh yeah right now i just leave them leave them in place and just check them out you can always go back and you can kind of uh listen to the what was recorded there for an event to find out what was happening a little bit later so um so this is uh as you go through you'll um you'll want to put in um a, a timing control and there's a couple of ways of doing that the first uh way i'll show you here is take one of these uh, numbered route instructions i'm going to do this one uh, nri8 and I'm going to change its type to type to uh, timing control. And now um, the timing control um, it shows up here. It gives me the exact mileage where that is, and the exact time at that point is given here. And then if we uh, we scroll over to the right, or you could expand this view, it actually um, the the box in the car actually uh, recorded the lat long that can be put into the Richter Rally app for the event. So that gets recorded in there. So that's uh, the first way to create a, uh, to, uh, to create a, uh, a timing control. The, the other way to do it is, um, you know, uh, select a row or select an item in a row and go um, uh, edit, insert timing control. And now it inserted another timing control in the middle of here but it's asking for what's the odometer for that value. So we need to put that in there. We're gonna, I'm just gonna make it really simple. It's gonna put four miles, hit return, and it's calculated based on the, uh, the 30 miles an hour or you know two minutes per mile. It's up to four, um, for four miles, it's actually calculated the, the, uh, uh, the, the car zero time for that entry. And if you, uh, and, the, and the way it did that, is um, it found um, the closest lat long um, at that mileage that you, we entered of four miles, calculated where that was and extrapolated the lat long position for that. So it came up with a latitude and longitude position um, um, at that location where this mileage of four miles came up. And so uh, you can continue on building the, the route book like this. We can. Uh, you know, we can enter in a speed change along here somewhere. We can uh, enter pauses in like this, you know, and at some point we're going to want to, um, we're going to probably want to start a new leg. So what we, what, what we, what you can do is um, sometimes, and, and our club does it this way, they'll actually have uh, the start or the end of one leg be the start of the next leg. So what you can, what you do is uh, you, you duplicate the event row. And so now I have two rows at exactly the same mileage, different NRI in them. But, um, and then you can take the first one of those pair that you created and make it a, um, an end section. And the next one you can make a begin section. And now we've got a new section um, and we need to, uh, we need to put in, it's, it's telling us we need to put in an out time. So let's, uh, All right, and we need to put in a, oh, a speed at outcome of 50. Um, yeah, I've got a, a, a software problem here that's not, it's not, it's telling me that the, uh, that this time is before the last one, but that's, uh, that's actually incorrect. So I do have, uh, do have some bugs I need to work on in here. So uh, anyway, that, uh, now I've got two legs in here and um, I can, you know, Again, I can construct the, the names of each of these instructions, write up the instructions uh, and keep going. And uh, so one of the things that some clubs do is our club does this on some rallies. We have these um, 
things called um, tulips or alpines, which are little maps of an intersection, which kind of guides the competitors and which way to go through them. So what I have in, in this app is a, uh, an alpine icon. And if you click on that icon, it brings up a, um, a, a satellite image of that intersection. And from this, you can construct an alpine uh, a stick map al alpine, for example, you you would draw a curved um, arrowed line in here, and then a, a through road this way, and you you know you can build a an alpine that can show up in your instructions to to help the uh, help the competitors make it through that intersection, and then you can save this you you save this away with the instruction, so. Um, um, so you can build build the instructions like this. The um, the other um, the tool that's available is we can actually take this route that we've created now, and we can open it up in um, in Google Earth. And so it spawns Google Earth. Let me try to shrink it in here so we can see it, and it goes in and shows you the entire course that you have here, and you can. You can zoom into instructions and look and see what's going on. Get it around. And so this is that intersection I was just showing from the satellite view. And if you click on the icon for a numbered route instruction, it gives you information about it. Uh, for example, what the name is, uh, what it's what it's Odo is at that time, what cars over time, and so on is. Um, so you can you can use the Google view to look at uh, to look at what's going on. Um, it's also very useful, you know, this instruction, um, let's see if we can get in here, this instruction uh, captured my voice and it said it was stop at East Santium with an S, but in actuality it's uh, Tanium is the name of the road. So you can use this to kind of double check names and uh, confirm what's, what's going on. It's kind of useful. You can't edit anything in here and then have it go back into the, the, the route book yet. So. We'll see if see if maybe I can do something like that someday. Um, so let's get out of here. Um, it's gonna have to be save. I'll just discard it. So uh, you can go through and get get that information. Um, you'll uh, you'll be setting um, speeds and pauses throughout the route. Um, again, how do you know they're correct? So I, I'm working on a tool that will um, actually do analysis of um, of the times that you recorded versus the times, uh, the times you actually did during the survey. So if you drive the survey, survey legal speeds, but fairly, you know, fairly aggressively, you can use that as a guide for actually setting your, uh, setting the, the cast speeds and the pauses. And so eventually I'm actually, uh, we'll have a, uh, probably have a mode where you could, you don't even need to enter the cast and pauses. Um, there'll be a tool that'll actually help you pick those. Uh, so you can click on that tool and it'll fill things in. And additionally, I'll, I'll do the same thing with the uh, with the timing the timing controls. You uh, specify certain criteria about where the timing controls can be. What you know, um, you know, if if a straight section or a road, uh, good GPS coverage, those sorts of things. You specify criteria and then it'll randomly select um, the timing controls uh, for you when you do it. So I'll uh, I plan to have that feature in here. Um, I, I, I'll have a, um, I'll have a designer, a route book designer, um, uh, feature in, in here that allow you to, uh, select the cover page, select, uh, um, section notes to put in headers and footers, the format of the output, that sort of thing that goes into the, the output PDF file that gets generated when you create the route book. And, uh, you'll be able to create a, a couple of different types, maybe one for the, for the, well, there are really no crews that required for this, but you might have a, you might have a sweet car that'll need the instructions. And so uh, you can create that from this as well. Um, I also plan to have a library of signs that you can use to uh, put inside of these, uh, inside of the instructions to build from things, you know, like a, a stop sign or a, you know, um, uh, paddle boards or, um, you know, lazy T rights, that sort of thing will be, uh, uh, part of a standard library of, of images that you can put into the into the route book, and then um, I uh, you you will be able to um, 
to automatically set your car or the, the Rally Master's odometer factor based on um, the GPS has a built-in odometer that it, that it can generate. And that odometer is really super good. It just doesn't work very good when you're crawling along or you're your stop for periods of time. It kind of accumulates mileages when you do that. So it works pretty good when you're moving. So um, it's a good reference point to get your Odo factor set pretty close to, uh, you know, to statute miles or, you know, kilometers, whatever you want. And, uh, and then you can go from there and you can also modify the Odo factor if you really wanted to. But um, uh, that's uh, that's kind of the plan for what this app will do. You can you can save these and recall them back um, this whole layout. Uh, so um, at, at this point, you're probably asking, you know, um, why do this? And what I, my goal is is to automate many of these tasks you have to do to create a rally. So you know, you um, when you're when you're doing this, when you're actually running the rally, you don't really have to care uh, care at all about the odometer. Um, for example, if you uh, if you drive the route and you go off the route to to go get fuel at a gas station, and you come back out, there's a, a feature in here that will actually allow you to um, to span between points. You can actually short circuit a section of the route so that it ignores the fact that you deviated deviated off that straight line and went in and get fuel and came back. It'll merge the points together and continue on the Odo without you really having to worry about um, what, you know, turning off the auto, remember to turn it back on, any of that kind of thing. So you won't have to do that. So, um, and when you're, when you're laying out this rally, you don't really care where the, the, the timing controls or checkpoints are gonna be. Uh, you don't have to find a wide spot in the road to, uh, that you're gonna have to pull off and, you know, collect the GPS data from to get the coordinates. All that's done automatically uh, the GPS coordinate is recorded as you go, and um, you know, and it's proven. Uh, it it seems to be a pretty accurate way to go. At least as accurate as sitting there and si sitting there stationary. Um, and your GPS coordinates are just like what the cars going to the competitors' cars are going to see when they're when they're running the rally. So um, it's kind of a it's a you're measuring a similar kind of thing. So um, you know, if uh, we're the the goal here is to kind of take out. Um, you know, errors in the way this is done. You know, we want to automate as much as we can. We don't want to have to enter um, stuff in so, you know, we can get, so that we get, uh, don't get the mileage just digits reversed or not entered incorrectly. If it's uh, it's pretty much an automated process, it's kind of likely to have human error involved with it. So, um, so that's, um, that's the idea behind this. Um, and I'm, uh, um, Curious to uh, find out what what you think. Is this uh, does this sound like something that's useful? Um, just let me know.